Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Oh, something that we have that we've been burdened by that we've been holding on to maybe we have to think about it for a second but we all got that struggle of we know 
where God is. We know where he's calling us, but there's those things in our lives that are pressing down on us. And I feel that God is asking us right now just to lay a hold of those things and throw them down at the foot of the cross. Whatever that is, whatever that thing is, let's just pick it up and throw it down. Throw it down so we make room for the yoke that is easy and the burden that is light. Come unto me, all you that are heavy, laden, and burdened, and I will give you rest for your souls. God, we want to come and learn of you. Whatever you want to. Whatever you want to. I will make room for you. Do whatever you to all from the Passion Center. I'm Pastor Tony Silvera. I welcome you here. Uh, today we're just online. It's the first Sunday of 2022. We're so excited that you could join us. And I'd like to share a message about planning, something that is boiling in my heart. And I believe it's God's word directly from the throne of God to you in this beginning of 2022. So the message for today, it's called planning for greatness, planning for greatness. And very often we make our own plans. And I don't know if, about you, but I'm uh, very usually modest in my planning. Uh, when I was younger, I used to plan bigger. And then with disappointments in life and uh, uh, just a check with reality, we start to plan a little bit smaller. But I'd like to encourage you today. And my scripture for this morning is found in Jeremiah 29, 11, And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So here's God saying, I have plans. And I have plans not just for myself, but I have plans for you. So God has plans for you. And, and so we need also to, to plan, to plan ahead. You know, when uh, we find stories in the Bible like Noah, uh, Noah uh, started planning before it began raining. It wasn't raining when he built the ark. So uh, planning, it, it, uh, it's part of God's nature and should be part of ours. Uh, if not, let's see now a scripture in the New Testament. These are the words of Jesus in Luke 14:28. He said, for which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, 
whether he has enough to complete it. So this is called budgeting. So Jesus is saying, uh, if you plan to build, budget for what you're building. Uh, check first if you have enough to finish it. Uh, by other words, uh, instead of budget, let me use another uh, uh, word that's evaluate, evaluation. Evaluating, it's uh, important when we plan. And evaluation is the basis for knowing where we want to go, uh, where we came from, and where we are. So we evaluate. Uh, we we uh, take a time, we take a moment, and we meditate about these things. Where am I? Where am I going? Uh, where did I came from? So these are important steps when we do the planning, when we do the evaluation. And so let me give you uh, five uh, things that I do when I uh, evaluate my life and when I try to plan. Maybe you can apply them to your life. So the number one thing is find a quiet place to think and plan. And so uh, reflection is important. Reflection is best done away from distraction. So uh, Jesus said in that uh, Bible verse, sit down and evaluate if you have enough. Evaluate. Uh, sit down and evaluate. Why sit down? Because it's important for us to find these uh, uh, quiet places, these moments where we can think and we can uh, plan. A second thing that I do is to meditate on a regular time. So whether it's once a week, every other week, once a month, a quarter, be sure that you set aside regular time intervals to evaluate and reflect. Uh, in, in business, we have quarters. Uh, so if you uh, uh, own a business or if you work for a business, you know you have quarters in which you evaluate and you compare one quarter to the previous uh, one. In our personal life, uh, you can have also these periods. I'm not saying to apply business strategies to your life, though you can, but uh, try to find a regular time. The beginning of the year, it's usually when people uh, plan for that year. Um, some people do. At least I try to do it. And even though if I arrive three months later and I'm going in a complete opposite direction, at least I sat down, I took time to evaluate, and I meditate on a regular time. A third thing that it's important to do is to look back. It's to uh, uh, take a serious look at where, what you have accomplished so far. So, and here we need to be specific. We need to be honest and uh, uh, leave the fantasy to the side. Uh, sometimes reality is harsh. It's, uh, it's difficult to face, but we need to look back and think, where, what, what did I achieve up to now? Where I'm at, uh, where, where I'm at now, and uh, what did I achieve in the past? And uh, sometimes we have great victories uh, far away in the past, and we don't have recent ones. That's not a motive to be disappointed, but it's part of the planning and evaluation process. Now, the fourth thing that I find important is to write down, write down uh, goals. Keep a record also. And this gives you the chance at the next stage of evaluation, see exactly where, you are, where you're at. And uh, there's a tool that I sometimes use. I used it more in the past. It's called a mind map. It's a graphical tool that you can use in a phone or a tablet or a computer. Uh, you can just draw that uh, mind map also on a piece of paper. Uh, and it's basically uh, to start from a center position. That's uh, uh, the, the analysis of where you're at. And then you start uh, drawing branches that uh, map where you want to go or map where you came from. Uh, there's different names for maps in organizations, like organigrams and, uh, and uh, stuff like this. But uh, bottom line, it's important to write it down so you have a visual look and a roadmap for what you're planning. 
And, and finally, number five, uh, fifth, look forward and set your next goals. And you need to stretch yourself according to what works for you. Uh, you know, for some people, they are motivated uh, by big things. Others, they're motivated by short-term goals. Short-term goals are always very important. If you've read my book, Power to Win, that I uh, uh, ra wrote uh, to help people with addiction, but it's good for everyone, uh, in that book I talk about short-term goals and why th those are so important. It's because sometimes uh, we can have the big picture, but we're not doing anything small uh, towards that direction. So it's very important that we do this, and it's part of this process of self-evaluation. The purpose of self-evaluation is twofold. First, it gives you an objective way to look at your accomplishments and your pursuit of the vision you have for your life. And second, it shows you where you are so you can determine uh, where you need to go. In other words, it gives you a baseline from which to work. Somebody once said the, that the unexamined life is not worth living. Uh, this is uh, uh, so, so, so important. We need to plan ahead. Abraham Lincoln, a very well-known uh, per personality in the United States, said once, Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I'll spend the first four sharpening the axe. So th this is just simple wisdom. If you need also to achieve something that you cannot uh, do uh, with your uh, current abilities, spend time developing yourself. Spend time learning, spend time studying, spend some time doing a good planning. And in all of this process, there are things that limit us. There's the limiters to our success. I can mention a few, like ego, uh, entitlement, uh, laziness, bad attitude. Sometimes we put a poor effort in what we do. Selfishness, also poor habits or bad habits, uh, excuses. Those are things that can limit our success. Uh, a great planner from the past is Sun Tzu. If you never read his book, just take time to read Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu said, plan for what is difficult while it's easy. Do what is great while it's small. Because challenges will always become greater and greater. If you're on the road to success, we'll face challenges and we'll face setbacks. The setbacks and the challenges are sometimes overwhelming, but we want to conquer. We want to be successful in what we do. God has plans for you, and he has plans to give you a future, plans to uh, prosperity, to give you success, pro plans for greatness. Solomon said in uh, Proverbs 16, uh, uh, verse 3, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. The same Solomon said in Proverbs 21.5, The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So the plans of the diligent. The plans of the diligent. What, what, what is the diligent? So uh, uh, I'll give you a definition from a Bible dictionary, from the King James Bible Dictionary. It says about uh, diligence, to love earnestly, to choose and a steady application in business is the constant effort to accomplish what is undertaken. Exertion of body and mind without unnecessary delay or sloth. Due attention, industry, assiduity. Diligence is the philosopher's stone that turns everything to gold. It's not enough to have good plans, but the key to get God's blessing is diligence. That's the King James Dictionary. It looks like a business book, but um, uh, it's truly important to, to be diligent. Diligence uh, the requires uh, hard work. If you have plans and you do not work towards those goals, you're not going to achieve them. Uh, it says it will lead you to poverty. But if you establish those plans and you diligently 
work to accomplish them, then this will uh, lead you to abundance. It says that God will guide you to ab abundance. Um, uh, an author that I like, Napoleon Hill, says, first comes thought, then organization of that thought into ideas and plans, then transformation of those plans into reality. The beginning, as you observe, is in your imagination, in your thoughts. It's so important to have good thoughts, positive thoughts. And here it's where you apply faith. And I will conclude uh, this uh, New Year's message uh, with this. Call the things that are not as if they are. This is a biblical principle. In Romans chapter 4, 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. This is God. God calls into existence the things that are not. That's uh, how the process of creation happen. Creative process has to do with thoughts that are then spoken into reality. Speak those things that are not as if they already are. And as you do this, you're using faith. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4.13, we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I have believed and therefore I spoken. We too believe and therefore we speak. So here's the process. Two aspects of faith that we need to grasp. First, we believe. And second, we speak it into existence. So a, a simple application of this. Let's say you're in the market to buy a new house. And you have money for a certain type of house, but you believe that you can have a better type of house. So you start confessing it. You, st you start telling it to your real estate agent. You say, listen, I want bigger, better location, and for the same price. And you may say, that's impossible. It doesn't matter what people say. You speak in faith. And as you speak in faith, you'll see things happening. I applied this into my life. I'm not telling you anything that I do not live. But uh, many times in my life, this happened to me that I wanted to live in a specific neighborhood. I wanted a, a, a certain size of house and it was impossible to get it. And I still did miraculously. Why? Because when you speak things in faith, God moves things in your favor. Things, people, thoughts, and you will have the grace and the favor of God in your life. I'm almost concluding, but uh, I'm going to still share a few thoughts. In 2 Corinthians 4, 13, as we read, it says, uh, I believed and so I spoke. I, we also believe and we also speak. So uh, this is the greatest principle of planning. After you plan, even if your plans are so big that they look like they're not going to be achieved, you speak them. And you can also build visual ads for this. You can uh, uh, have pictures that you put in certain places and you speak those things. You need to remind yourself of your plans. So let me summarize what we talked about. First, plan for greatness. And as you do so, involve God in this process. Pray to God. Ask for God's wisdom. Second, meditate in your success. Try to focus on the things, the good things that you achieved in life instead of focusing on negative things. And finally, speak the word of faith. Before I conclude, let me mention just an aspect of all this. You need to have excellence in what you do. By other words, you need to apply yourself. Excellence is to do what is effective, not what is impressive. Remember, you're not in this world to impress your followers on Facebook, uh, to do great things on Twitter, uh, to be uh, rich and famous. You're in this world to achieve great things that God prepared for you. Second, 
making it better, thinking better ways to do things, be more efficient. Efficiency is key in everything. If you want to have a great uh, car, for instance, you find an efficient car, one that doesn't need to be repaired all the time, that is reliable, and that is uh, good on gas. It, at least uh, that's what I do. But uh, uh, you may have other plans. If you don't want gas, go electric. But find one that is efficient. And finally, do your best with what you have available. So this is the principles uh, of, of faith. Jesus used a, a, a few fish and a, a few loaves of bread to multiply them and to supply, to provide to a crowd. He used what was available, and we need to do the same thing. So a final uh, scripture for today that I would like to share is in Colossians 3.17. It says, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So this is my final thought. It's when you plan, don't plan just for yourself. Plan and do things for God. Plan things uh, as if you were going to use your resources for the embitterment of others, for the greatness of God's kingdom. Because if, as you do this, you have the grace and the favor of God blessing you. You have the hand of God over your life. And so do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. So whatever you achieve, all those successes you achieve, all those steps in your plan, you thank God. You say, God, I did this because of your grace because of your favor, because of your goodness, I thank you, God, for what you did for me. So let me conclude with a word of prayer. And I pray for everyone watching this service this morning. And I thank you, God, because you are speaking to each one of us individually. And as you told the prophet Jeremiah, you have plans for us. Individually, you have plans for each one of us to give us a future, to give us a hope, to give us a, a place, God, where we'll be influential in this world. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you make us more aware of your plans, that you bless us more and more. And this morning, I pray for every person watching that they will receive insight from you for this new year and that 2022 will be a, a year of great prosperity and blessing to your children in jesus name amen i'll give you some more hints on uh, how to plan properly don't forget that uh, not only i'm here on sunday but i do a, a live um, uh, let's call it a show a live show every weekday at 9 p.m. So every weekday at 9 p.m. on social media, I am live with a small study from the Word of God. So God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. And above all, plan, 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 plan with God and plan for greatness. God bless you.